DirectX to Vulkan, commonly just called DXVK, is one of the most important pieces to the Linux gaming puzzle, right up there with things like Wine. Without this tool, a lot of the games we see playable right now would not be in that state whatsoever, and DXVK basically does exactly what it says on the tin. DirectX is not supported under Linux, it is only supported under Windows, but a lot of the games out there only support DirectX. So we need to convert this graphics API into something that works on Linux, one of those being Vulkan. So DXVK converts the DirectX 9, 10, and 11 calls into Vulkan calls and does so in a fairly efficient way. Now, as for DirectX 12, this is handled by a separate project called VKD3D, but it achieves basically the same goal. And considering the news that came out about Intel Arc and DXVK, I think this is as good a time as any to do a bit of a history lesson on how DXVK came into existence. In the case of Intel, Intel is using DXVK for their Windows Arc GPU DX9 drivers. Now, they do have a native DX9 implementation, but in many cases, it's so bad that it's quicker to convert the DX9 calls into Vulkan and then run it through their Vulkan implementation. I love that this exists. This is amazing. Also, in case you didn't know, DXVK does also run under Windows, so you can convert DirectX into Vulkan and in some cases get better performance. Now, like most FOSS projects out there, there's not just a single developer involved. In the case of DXVK, there's currently 118 contributors, but when you look back through the history of the repo, there is very clearly two main developers, those being Philip Rebol and Joshua Ashton, with Philip being the owner and the creator of the project, so it only makes sense to start with Philip's story. Like you might expect from someone who goes on to create a graphics translation layer, Philip has always been interested and involved in doing graphics development. Prior to DXVK though, it's always been these little hobby projects and fixing his own problems that he's running across while he's computing. His first contact with DirectX 11 actually being involved in Wine, trying to deal with a render bug in one of the games he wanted to play. Wine has its own DirectX 11 implementation but at the time, he was dissatisfied with the state it was currently in, the quality it was in, how well it rendered things, the performance it had, and he felt like it could be in a much, much better state, and it really should have been in a better state. At the time, because of how Wine was working, he was dual-booting Windows for gaming, but he wanted to stop doing that at some point into the future. Now, at this point, it is definitely the biggest, but DXVK is not the first, and not even the only direct decks to Vulcan converter. At the time, there was another project called VK9, doing what DXVK is doing, but only for DirectX 9. This project seemed like it was going fairly well at the time. It was, you know, making progress. It was still pretty far away from actually playing a real game, but it seemed like this is how we were going to be handling DirectX 9. And he was inspired by what was being done here and knew that this could be done. And there was one game at the time he really wanted to play. That game being... Near Automata. And then finally, January 14th, 2018, version 0.2, initial release, supports the game Near Automata. And this didn't go unnoticed. This got the attention of Valve. This was about three or so years after the failure known as the Steam Machine. But Valve was not done with Linux as a gaming platform. They could still see what Windows were doing and wanted some sort of contingency plan. And they saw the potential that DXVK had and ended up contracting this guy and he still works for Valve today. And a couple of months after this came out, do you know what also came out? Proton in August of the same year. And I doubt the Proton would have ever existed if DXVK didn't exist first. But it's not always been smooth sailing. Back in 2019, Wine was looking to do their own Vulkan backend, and DXVK wasn't what was going to be used. 
but it wasn't just not going to be used because they didn't have any interest in doing so. It seemed like there wasn't interest from the DXVK side either. The other thing people seem to want to know is why not DXVK? On first sight, you might say DXVK is written in C++, uses a non copyleft license, and duplicates a bunch of existing Wine code for no good reason, while Wine obviously prefers C, LGPL, and something that fits into the existing architecture of Wine, i.e. at the outset, these really aren't design decisions you'd make if your goal is to eventually become part of the Wine project. Nevertheless, those things wouldn't be disqualifying per se. I learned about DXVK either near the end of 2017 or near the start of 2018. In February 2018, we reached out to Philip Rebo, the author of DXVK, to start a conversation around whether there were any areas we could cooperate on. That email went unanswered. Now, I appreciate that different people have different ideas about what's acceptable and what isn't, but personally I find that's extremely rude and uncivilized. Nevertheless, email gets lost sometimes, sometimes people are busy. Everyone gets a second chance. So a few months later, since I was organizing WineConf 2018, I sent Philip a personal invitation to attend WineConf and perhaps discuss things there. That invitation went unanswered too, at which point I was pretty much done with DXVK. But I don't know how much that was him not caring, as opposed to not really being sure what the future of the project is going to be. Later that same year, he said this in a merge request. This is when he was considering not continuing work on DXVK, it being basically in maintenance mode. It's because DXVK has become a fragile, unreliable and frustrating maintenance nightmare, most of the 1.4.x releases introduced major regressions which I cannot reproduce and therefore cannot debug and fix. This includes GPU hangs in Overwatch on specific maps with NVIDIA GPUs. Some users claim it's fixed in 1.4.6, while others still have them. Rendering issues in Dishonored 2, Vertex explosions in some games, which I also can't reproduce, an ongoing Star Citizen issue, which I still need to debug, and tons of weird issues which don't make any sense whatsoever. Most of these problems are still unresolved, and I have no idea how to even track them down, let alone even fix them, and the ones that got fixed, got fixed by reverting otherwise useful changes, because I simply do not understand any of the issues at all. Now, you could just say, oh, but it's his code base, he should understand the code. This project had existed for quite a while at this point, and as you're working on something like this, you're going to get better at programming. If you don't have a strict guideline for how something is going to be implemented, it is gonna get a bit spaghetti -y over time. Everyone was like, hey, this just sounds like burnout. Take a break, take two weeks off, take three weeks off. We all appreciate the work you're doing, but you work really, really hard and you need some time for yourself. But as we can see from, well, him still being an active developer, the project still going, him still having a job at Valve, eventually he worked out a way to keep going forward and keep working on things and now it's in a much better state than it ever was before. Now Joshua is another very interesting case. He has been a developer in some form or another since he was seven years old, doing, you know, basic Hello World examples, very simple games, and eventually when he got to secondary school, started making simple game mods and simple game engines, nothing like, you know, Unreal 5, but a simple project that you might take on when you're a fairly young developer and eventually he wanted to play Just Cause 2 under Linux. And to do so, he needed to convert DirectX 10 into DirectX 11 for it to work properly under Wine. And the work for that project is in a long dead project called DX Up, DirectX Up. This will convert DirectX 9 or 10 up to DirectX 11. Now, I only mentioned a DirectX 10 game. Why is DirectX 9 in there? Well, Joshua can be coaxed into development challenges. He had a friend who thought it would be cool, this is gonna sound dumb, to play Source games and a random game called Blade Symphony on the Windows phone. Now, keep in mind, this work was being done in 2018. The Windows phone, while still technically existing, was a long dead platform and it was a platform that only supported DirectX 11. Now, DX Up was made a couple of months 
after DXVK, well into 2018. This was clearly a hobby project and not a serious project to push gaming on the Windows Phone. But with DXVK existing, he did realise the implications of a project like this in the context of Linux gaming. And at the time, DXVK had no DirectX 9 support. And then someone made a serious mistake. He was at a developers conference and knew about the work being done with DXVK and wanted to do the same thing with DX9 and was discussing how this might be done. And someone actually told this 17 year old kid, it is a waste of time, you couldn't do it and you should work on something else. This kid was very stubborn and took that personally and took it as a challenge. So, to spite this person, he went and did it, creating the project D9VK. Within a few weeks, he had DirectX 9 demos running, and then within a few months, he was playing a hat in time. And then on December 16th, 2019, he got ready to get this merged into the upstream DXVK. And that is exactly why DXVK has a DirectX 9 implementation. And much like Philip, the work that Joshua did on D9VK also got noticed by Valve, eventually leading to Valve picking him up as well. And this likely took a lot of the stress off of Philip now that there are multiple paid employees working on this project. As of 2022, there is a lot more money being put into DXVK, into Wine, into Proton, into all of this tech, and there's a lot more paid developers working on these projects. Without the work that all of these developers had done, Proton probably wouldn't exist, and if it did exist, we may still be at 27 supported games, not like we're at now, where I can go onto the Steam store, buy a game, and it probably just works. Maybe it needs a little tweaking, but I can play pretty much anything. And I also want to say that a lot of the information in this video came from two interviews done by Liam Dorr over on Gaming on Linux. I'll leave these linked in the description down below. They are a really good read, but there's a lot of things in here that don't really relate to the origin of these projects, so I cut most of that stuff out. So, I hope you learned something. Do you make use of DXVK on a daily basis? Do you game under Linux? Or are you a boomer who has never touched a video game in his entire life? I would love to know. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, the Libero pay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Opton Plays. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.